So this is what happens when you play around on NetGalley. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Angela and yeah, today's video is the result of me trying to find out how NetGalley actually works. So this is a service that provides eARCs um, to yeah reviewers um, and this is my first time using them. I have to say when I set up my account and then you request kind of like the books that you would like to review, my hopes weren't very great because yeah, some of the, um, how shall I say, publishing houses are very into gatekeeping and I thought my channel is probably far too small that I get approved for anything, but I thought, hey, I'll give it a try. So surprise i did get approved so and yeah today's video is the result of this so the text i requested and then um was sent to me so thank you net galley for providing the e -arc for kate hartfield the valkyrie um and yes this is as with all those videos in exchange for an honest review so um Kate Hartfield, Valkyrie. Um, this is a Canadian author. This isn't her first book, so it's the first book I'm reading by her. I haven't read anything else by her before, but she seems to have um, written other books that are more in the fantasy line. She seems to have written a time travel story, for example. So this is not her first attempt at writing fantasy. And Valkyrie is a myth retelling, so it's bang on trend from that point of view because we've had quite a few of those by now. If you think, for example, of Madeline Miller, Circe, um, not so, it's in that vein. Um, but the difference here is that most of the myth retelling stuff we've gotten recently are books that deal with ancient Greek myths. Um, whereas Valkyrie looks at Norse uh, myths and also at mat material from a Germanic tradition. So the text that um, Kate Hartfield is looking at here is actually a cluster of texts. Um, it's primarily the Völsung saga that um, you can find in this book. So if you're familiar with the material, this is probably the source um, text that is most prominent. Um, but she also used the Eddas. Um, she says she used the Nibelungen lead, um, the Song of the Nibelungs, which surprised me a little bit, but she claims that she's read it and um, she seems to have used a 19, late 19th century um, translation. Actually the same, I think, that Tolkien used as well when he read it. Um, so those are the texts that form the background to this novel. Um, and they deal with the story of Sigurd, how he um, kills the dragon Fafnir um, and then helps Gunnar to, yeah, basically marry Brunhild and he, as a thank you, gets then um, Gunnar's sister Gudrun in marriage. And so far so good and this sounds all wonderful, but then everything basically goes downhill very fast from there because at the core of the medieval story and then also of the core of... Um, yeah, Kate Hartfield's retelling is a lot of betrayal that then generates a lot of revenge. So the Valkyrie and the name means the Shooser of the Slain are shield maidens that are servants to Odin and they're sent down to the battlefield to, yeah, select the warriors that they then think are worthy to go to Valhalla and then guide them there. So that's their function and they're very prominent in Norse mythology so we find them in different texts and as I say one of the texts where they play a role is the Völsung saga and especially the Valkyrie Brunhild and 
she is one of the two women characters that Kate Hartfield made central for her retelling. So we have Brunhild, who, when we meet her, is an ex-Valkyrie. So she was booted out of this club. She was told, leave. Um, and then we have Gudrun, um, a Burgundian princess, and her kingdom yeah, is on the brink of war. And yeah, she... She basically is forced to become a diplomat. And Hartfield gives us the backstory to those two women. So how did they get into this position? Um, and yeah, what happened to them basically? But then also when the story unfolds further, how could all this go so wrong? And we get it exclusively from a female point of view. So this is the first person narration and we have um, alternating chapters so we have a couple of chapters where we have Brunhild telling her story and then we kind of like switch to Gudrun and she tells us her story and so it goes backwards and forwards overall the style of the book is stunningly beautiful it's very lyrical um, it goes into the direction of books like, if you like, Piranesi um, by Susanna Clarke, for example, or if you like the books by Hilary Mantel, especially Wolf Hall and that trilogy. Um, so the style goes into this direction. Uh, the downside, perhaps, is that both voices are quite similar. So they're not very distinctive. Um, and I think if you're a reader who wants very distinctive character voices, um, then this might not work so well for you. Um, but I, I personally like the style. I like this type of writing. Um, I didn't have such a big problem that there are two first person narratives, so to say, that are yeah side by side or intertwined and layered on top of each other. Um, I personally like this, but I could understand that um, there are readers who might find this slightly problematic. Um, the other thing is it's a very introspective book. I mean, we still have all the elements that we have in the medieval source material. So we have Sigurd, we have the dragon, um, we have um, Attila, we have uh, Hagen, and um, we have this whole betrayal story going on as well. So there are battle scenes, um, there are fight scenes, but there are also huge portions of the book that are very calm, quiet, um, introspective. Um, we get a lot of reflection of those two central female characters. Um, and yeah, it's it's not an action-led or action-driven book as such. Um, I actually think that if you're not too familiar with the source material, this might work better because um, I know those source texts quite well. I used to teach the Nibelungen lead, so there wasn't anything new from a plot point of view for me in this book. Um, so I could imagine that this book actually works better if you're not too familiar with the material because yeah how shall i say that there is just much more happening for you whereas um, because i knew what would happen um yeah it forced me more to concentrate on the more contemplative um aspects of the book now as i say i personally like this um, but I could see that um, there are some readers who say this might not work for me. So, as I say, the book overall and the retelling overall stays quite close to what we get in the Wellsong Saga. And as I say, you don't have to have read this, but um, this is kind of like the text I think that's most prominent in it. Um, that also means she takes those central themes that we have in the medieval source text of betrayal and revenge um, and they feature prominently in this retelling as well. But I think 
um, Hartfield manages then to kind of like introduce new topics to us. And they are mostly female, maybe even feminist um, themes that she introduces um, due to the fact that we, as I say, have two yeah, female narrative voices. Um, so other themes that are explored then are, for example, the question of female solidarity or the lack of female solidarity. Um, yeah, questions of female friendship are um, looked at as well. But we're also getting an exploration of exile and loneliness from a female perspective, especially with Brunhild and her story, who is effectively exiled from Valhalla. She's not part of the Valkyrie anymore. Um, and also she has lost her, yeah, almost godlike status because of that. So her story is then also an exploration of what does it actually mean to be a human um, no? and lead a human life. Um, while she's in Valhalla, for example, she can't age. So when we encounter her, she's hundreds of years old, but still has the body of a young woman and is now confronted with the fact that, yeah, I will get older, I will eventually die. So it explores those yeah, very human questions, but through a female lens. Um, and also it looks at the fact, yeah, how women are written out of history. So she makes a couple of alterations with the source material. And I will not tell you what they are because that would be quite some spoilers. But there are a couple of very interesting deviations from the source material. And they all veer into this um, idea that, yeah, the source material gives us a male point of view, has male heroes. And while some of the sources, especially the uh, Nibelungen lead, already has some stunning scenes where those two female figures are central, so Brunhild and Gudrun, or Krimhild und Brünnhild, as they're known in the Nibelungenlied. Um, there are some stunning scenes, but they're mostly confrontational. No? There are the scenes where kind of like each woman and like confront each other and are at loggerheads and kind of like no? scream betrayal and how could you and no. So, um, and there are exceptionally done scenes in the medieval texts. But otherwise, the medieval texts, the heroes of those texts are men. Um, whereas Hartfield, as I say, she alters this source material in some respects. Um, and we see how the achievements of either of those two women then might have been deleted out of the version that we then know as this medieval source material. So... Kate Hartfield, The Valkyrie, will be out on the 30th of March, and the publisher is HarperCollins. And yeah, if you are in the market for another myth retelling, if you like Norse mythology, if you like strong, complex, interesting female characters, um, a prose that a little bit more on the lyrical side, and books that are, yeah, overall perhaps a little bit more reflective or contemplative, then, yeah, this might well be a book for you. So thank you for watching, happy reading, and all the best.